Back on the Young Turks. Now I want to talk to uh, new congressman from uh, Virginia, Tom Perriello. Tom, uh, welcome back to the Young Turks. Hey, it's good to be back. How are you? Uh, I'm, I'm great, man. I'm glad you could join us. Uh, you know, we were just on Adam Green, who started uh, PCCC, uh, and it's an organization that's going to help uh, people, you know, go find progressive candidates and then help them to win elections. And we wanted to talk to you about this because I know some of the people that worked on your campaign also work at PCCC. So you, you were categorized by Politico and by us as probably the biggest upset of the year when you took down Virgil Good uh, in your district. So the obvious question, Tom, is uh, how'd you do it? What do you think were the keys to the victory? Well, I mean, I think that uh, we were trying to shake things up a little. We put a lot more into grassroots and field organizing, direct voter contact than is traditional. We put a lot into getting people on the ground early. In a district that's the size of the state of New Jersey, uh, the traditional thing to do would be to focus on the airwaves and direct mail. But my goal was for people to have met me or a member of my team before they saw me on television with the ads in the fall. And I think that's why you saw us go from down 34 points in August uh, to uh, to closing the gap and, and pulling off the upset. So I think that was a big part. The second was I think that the conventional wisdom was the way to win a district like this was to sort of be republican light to, to follow the, you know, what would have in the 90s been the centrist model. Um, but I think, you know, my sense is people care more about right and wrong than right and left. So the key is to put a real plan out there, and sometimes that means being progressive, sometimes it means rejecting that spectrum altogether. Um, you know, as, uh, as Obama said in his inauguration, as the president said, you know, this is, we're not a generation that has the same fight about big government or small government, we just want things to work. Um, and so I think that, you know, going right at it, uh, including taking a strong stand on issues like torture and poverty, um, people come to respect us more for our principles than for what sounds like pandering uh, if you're if you're doing that kind of a poll-driven campaign. Um, so, you know, that, that made a big difference. Um, but also, I think, coming from a, a nonprofit background, a lot of the lessons learned from uh, from the experiences in fundraising and other things really, really helped out a lot. Well, how did you find the right people? That seems to be another thing. I mean, you're starting out and, and you know, you haven't been in this business before. How do you get in touch with the right people? Well, I mean, I think uh, we, we actually, in some cases, made great decisions. And uh, in other cases, you know, we made some horrible decisions. And it cost us uh, a, a lot of money, but we also made some really good decisions. And I think, you know, the key is to be able to distinguish uh, what I call movement people from mercenaries. And I think when you find the folks who both have the dedication um, to really focus on the greater good and also the professionalism uh, to know how to pull something like this off, that's, you know, that's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars in money saved on the trail. But the fact is that often you're choosing between <laughs> movement people who are really, really dedicated but don't necessarily know what they're doing or say the mercenary set that knows what they're doing, but they're they're uh, they're not really uh, in it for the cause necessarily. So um, you know when you find those people with goals, and if uh, P Trip or other organizations can help someone early on, and um, in doing that, I think it really could make a difference. If P Trip was around, you think in the year that you were running, could it have saved some other uh, progressive candidates in, in terms of turning their losses into victories? Do you think you can make that much of a difference? Uh, just knowing the talent involved uh, alone, uh, you know, it would, would make me think yes. Um, it's, a, it's a tremendously experienced group of uh, seeing what works and what doesn't work. And, um, yeah, I think they would be very, very valuable to a lot of candidates from what I've seen. Um, and uh, I, I heard Adam who claimed that uh, he doesn't, hasn't done fundraising before, but then new to say the website over and over again so uh, you know I think uh, I think he's up that learning curve pretty far but um, you know again to me it's not necessarily about the ideology of how progressive one is but it is about you know the boldness I think right now what we're already seeing with what's going on in Washington with this economic recovery and other things is you know we need people who uh, use the cliche think outside the box and understand that uh, we are so far behind when it comes to issues of climate change or competitiveness that we've got to we got to swing for the fences up